Optical sensors are finding their way into everything, even shoe design. We'll run you through the state of the art this week on Light Matters. This is Light Matters for June 17th, 2015. I'm your host, James Lowe. This week, we'll catch up with the news from Sensors Expo in California and Photonics Media's digital conference on bioimaging. But first, we'll take a look at the latest research in bacterial identification and on-chip light sources. Incandescent bulbs may be a thing of the past, but the principle of light-emitting filaments may have a new use in displays and optical communications. Researchers from the U.S. and South Korea collaborated to develop graphene filaments that heat up to about 2,500 degrees Celsius and emit visible light from a microchip. Graphene is a poor heat conductor, and so it doesn't transfer any of that heat to the silicon substrate, which would otherwise melt. The spectrum of the emitted light showed peaks at specific wavelengths, which the team discovered was due to interference between the light emitted directly from the graphene and light reflecting off the substrate and passing back through the graphene. The emitted wavelengths can be tuned by varying the distance between the filament and the substrate. The researchers said graphene filament light sources could be mass-produced using chemical vapor deposition. That makes them a candidate for integration into optoelectronics and flexible displays. The research was published in Nature Nanotechnology. Pairing holographic microscopy with machine learning software could help hospitals and the food industry screen for bacterial infection in real time. A quantitative phase imaging unit developed at South Korea's Advanced Institute for Science and Technology converts standard optical microscopes into holographic microscopes capable of performing the analysis. The process relies on Fourier transform light scattering measurements to create 2D angle resolved light scattering maps of bacteria. The maps are then fed through machine learning software, similar to that used for facial recognition, which identifies the individual strains almost immediately. The researchers plan to test the system next month in Tanzania. In a lab trial, the system distinguished between four types of bacteria with greater than 94% accuracy. The research was published in Optics Express. We'll have more on bioimaging after the break, when we take a look at some of the highlights from Photonics Media's recent digital conference. Stay with us. Hello, I'm Mark Wilkinson. I'm the MD of Laser Beam Products. We're an optical manufacturing company near Cambridge in England. We've been established 25 years. We're here at one of our many trade shows today to show off our range of metal mirrors. One of the most important things about our products is they're conventionally polished. They're not diamond machines. And the beauty of this means that the surfaces are extremely smooth. Our website is www.lbp .co.uk and you can email us online. We're also on Twitter, that's at Laser Mirror, and you can find us on Facebook as well. Welcome back. Last week, Photonics Spectra editor Justine Murphy was in Long Beach, California for the 30th Annual Sensors Expo and Conference. Here she is with a recap. Thanks, James. Photonics Media was an industry sponsor of the show and presented an optical sensing and detection education track. Speakers included Laurent Jamet, Director of Business Development at Isorg in France. He discussed the company's new generation of high-performance optoelectronic sensors that, with 3D product integration, are capable of recognizing various shapes and form factors. The business model, so we are designing and manufacturing complex optoelectronic system. Uh, we have heard many uh, conferences today that the technology is one thing, but what the market is asking includes complex solutions. So, that's what we are doing, starting from the technology. We just consider this technology as enabler and we provide all the system if the customer has no means or capability to design all the optoelectronic system, which is most of the case. And that's the reason why we have a mix of competence in the company. John Tyson, president of Trillion Quality Systems of Pennsylvania, presented 3D optical deformation and strain measurements. Here, he focused on the company's Aramis technology, a digital image correlation and optical measurement system. The technology is now in use in the automotive and aviation industries, and was even used by Adidas to design its new UltraBoost running shoe. According to Tyson, it will soon be used similarly by other sports apparel brands, including Nike. Anars Unamuno of the Fraunhofer Institute for Photonic Microsystems in Germany led a discussion about MEMS-based acoustic and optical sensor technology for the industrial sector, as well as for chemical analysis. And Robert Reichenbach, president and chief engineer of Micronor of California, spoke on fiber optic position sensors and their potential applications and presented related case studies. 
when you think about it, you put the fiber like that, put it under a carpet and somebody steps on it, you get exactly that effect. Uh, just that, that pattern wiggles. And people effectively do make use of it. We actually make it fiber optic intrusion sensors for security mats, for, for, for um, uh, around perimeter fences where you have fibers weaved in. And at the end, you look, any disturbance there you sense, you literally can detect a mouse walking over. It's that sensitive. The two-day expo also featured more than 200 exhibitors from around the world that showcased products from optical sensors and sensing drones to infrared detectors and machine vision components. While Justine was in Long Beach, biophotonics editor Rod Pedrotti and I were at Photonics Media's HQ hosting a digital conference on biophotonic imaging for medical applications. Rod has the highlights. Thanks, James. Keynote speaker Idowan Ozjan of the University of California, Los Angeles, gave a fascinating presentation on harnessing mobile phones' computing power and CMOS cameras, as well as many different 3D printed next generation image sensing and diagnostic tools to be attached to these smartphones, all with the goal of pushing the envelope on computational photonics techniques, extremely powerful and cost effective ones, in fact, that can serve as platforms for biomedical tests and perform scientific measurements that normally would require high-tech laboratory equipment. Björn Kemper of the University of Munster in Germany presented on quantitative phase digital holographic microscopy, or DHM, with the goal of aiding those who suffer from the debilitating effects of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. There's an urgent need to quantify therapeutic responses of new drugs and preclinical studies to help these patients. And this technique is key in helping to drive the understanding of these conditions. Manu Jen of the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York spoke to the fact that urological surgery frequently requires rapid on-site tissue evaluation for appropriate patient management. Current standard evaluation techniques are time consuming and tissue processing can create artifacts that slow down the evaluation even further. In fact, according to Jen, multi-photon microscopy, or MPM, can rapidly assess tissue in real time and at the cellular level without further processing, which can, in turn, help lead to a reduction in unnecessary biopsies. You can view each of the 11 presentations and find out more information at photonics.com slash bioconference. Thanks, Rod. That's it for this week's edition of Light Matters. As always, we love to hear your feedback. Leave us a comment below, and if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.